Hello and welcome to the Odds Checker betting show. Uh, this is a preview of this weekend's racing ahead of the Art Weekend at Longchamp and some great racing as well on Saturday, uh, both over in France and at Newmarket in Ascot as well. We're going to try and cover the whole lot. I'm your host, George Ellick, and I'm delighted to be joined by both Andy Holding and Danny Archer uh, as we look ahead to the weekend's racing. Uh, Andy, I'll start with you. Um, Art Weekend, obviously one of the highlights of the flat season uh, for any racing fan. Um, have you ever been out there? Any, any good experiences? Yeah, I went out there once, um, I think it was 2003, I can't remember what won it now, um, it was the last time I went, which is a hell of a long time ago, 19 years. Um, I remember doing it um, in one day there and back, uh, and I swore if I went back again, I'd never do that again, I'd stay over. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I haven't had a chance to go back since, uh, through other commitments, or just prefer to watch it at home, basically. Um, but yeah, I know a few people going over this weekend, I'm sure they'll have a great time. Forecast a little bit, if we'll get onto that in a second. Mm. Um, but um, it looks a good arc, doesn't it? You know, twenty odd runners. Probably not as classy as normal, um, but I think because of that, we've got a genuine sort of seven to two footer on the field race. Absolutely. And Danny, looking at the backdrop behind you, it looks like you've made the trip to Paris. Oh, I wish George. No, Mallorca, <laughs> not Paris. Uh, I did Paris earlier on this year, and I've done I've done a couple of French Opens, but never the arc. So I'd like to get over for the arc at this time of year. But no, as Andy said. It looks a really good race. I think my, my best memory is probably 2009, seeing the Stars winning it under Mick Canam, but there's been some great performances, of course, since then. But it, it's an interesting race this year. Bit of a shame that Very Elegant didn't run just for the international field, but still a very competitive event. Yeah, absolutely is. Uh, I've only been once, and I was there for, for Golden Horns Arc, so I managed to choose a pretty good year. Um, unbelievable scenes that day. Um, although, yeah, the, the French, um, the I think I was one of the 5% of people not supporting Trev, so that was uh, exciting. <laughs> fan. Always good to be an away fan. Um, Andy, you mentioned the you know the conditions uh, a second ago. Um, what are we expecting uh, the you know the, the going to be come Sunday at, at Longchamp? Well, I think the best judge is uh, Charlie Appleby and um, the connections of um, Adi are because they took a, a view, didn't they, early on in the week that uh, they weren't going to go over to, to Paris. Um, they've obviously got good weather maps because. It is currently soft at the moment, or very soft, as they call it over there. Uh, always get some misleading going reports, don't we? I've been Longchamp, mm-hmm. Deauville and Chantilly. That their sort of like soft ground becomes sort of good ground by the, by the weekend. But if you have a look at the forecast, particularly today, I think they're going to get the back end of what we're having. I don't think you've probably got it down there in London, but looking out my window, we've had persistent rain for two hours. That low pressure um, um, sort of unit is going to go all the way across, down south, and then hit sort of like, the continent um, this evening into tomorrow, I think they're going to get a persistent then band of rain and, and showers all the way through the weekend, looking at the reports that I've got anyway. So I think it is probably going to be, at the very, very least, very soft, but I, I'd predict it'll be similar to last year and, and I'd, I'd say it'd be heavy ground come Sunday. Yeah, an arc on heavy ground uh, is the forecast. Uh, Danny, we, we postponed this. We normally do the odds check betting show on a Thursday, but we wanted to make sure that we had as much information as possible, and of course, with the the draw at about I think it was half past ten yesterday morning. Um, thoughts on the draw? I mean, how important do you think it is? I mean, it's obviously um, we, we know that you probably don't want a particularly high draw with the arc, but I mean, how put off and, and how swayed are you when you saw the the draw yesterday? Well, that's interesting, George. You said you went for Golden Horn, of course. That's probably the yeah. uh, the one uh, the one anomaly really with, with the Frankie Frank special. But I, yeah. some some people sometimes say be drawn on on the inside. I think if you're between the six and twelve, so I think Luxembourg, he's not got a bad draw in eight. The one who probably hasn't done very well with the draw, and as Andy said, with the rain, will be really suited. Is the defending champion in eighteen, Torquato mm-hmm. Tasso. So that's going to be a tricky job for Frankie. But I think most of the other market principles don't look to have awful draws. Uh, Japan title holder, he's in ten. Alpinister in six. So I think if there was one horse that probably, you know, the draw has not helped his Torquato or Tato, but obviously he's got a guy who's won the race six, I think it's six times already. So he's got the, the perfect pilot on board. Yeah, Frankie, of course, taking the ride on Torquato Tasso would be some end to a, a turbulent season if Frankie were to, to win the arc here. Or I shouldn't say the end. We've got a not a bad uh, day's racing at Ascot in a couple of weeks as well. Um, let's get into our previews then. And we're going to, I mean, we've already kind of started, I guess, with the arc. Um, and we are going to start with the arc. We're going to go through uh, the four races that we have prices for. Um, you know, it's obviously quality racing throughout the day, uh, group ones, left, right, and centre. But we're going to be looking at the arc, uh, then the Prix de l'Opera, the Prix de l'Abbé, and then the Prix de la Forêt um, will be the four races that we preview in, uh, in, in depth because we have prices or some prices at least. And then we'll also ask the guys, um, obviously, Cracking Racing over there on Saturday. And then 
um, some good racing at Ascot in Newmarket as well. So for any other business, um, we'll go through. Uh, do download the Odds Checker app now uh, for the best prices. Book your offers, free bets uh, and tipsters straight um, to the app every morning of racing and place terms as well. Just looking now at the ARC market um, and Hill's already standing out going five places uh, whilst 365 are three. So you, you do want to make sure you're shopping around, especially as Andy says, with a, an ARC field uh, where you're getting a, a seven and two favourite and uh, kind of 11 to two bar those. Uh, you want to be shopping around for your place terms. We're recording this just before, well, just after 12.30 on Friday. Um, so final decks are in. Everyone's taking a bit longer than normal to, to get their prices out. Um, so it, these are early prices and are subject to change pretty quickly. Uh, but we'll start with the arc um, 305 on Sunday. Uh, and Luxembourg is the is the time, yeah, just second half of Manchester Derby will just be starting. Shame they couldn't push that back 10 minutes. Um, it'll be, uh, yeah, Luxembourg, the 7 and 2 favourite ahead of Alpinistra at 11 to 2. To Quay Tasso, defending champion, 15 to 2. For Daini, 8 to 1. Title holder, 8 to 1. Westover, 10 to 1. Uh, Onesto, 12 to 1. And then 25 to 1 bar those with El Hakim. Uh, Mendocino, uh, Dudius, Merostralis, Mishrif, all 33 to 1, 40 to 1 bar those. Uh, and Andy, I, I guess, you know, you mentioned the heavy uh, ground that, you know, the going is going to be tough. And I think a lot of people will probably be, look, be looking at bigger prices uh, for this year's arc for that reason. Um, and and the, the field is kind of split into a top end and a bottom end as well. Uh, where do you think the value lies? I think the value will probably end up lying with last year's winner, um, Toquata Tasso, just because. Everyone thinks that he can't win from stall 18. Um, I, I, I'd probably look at it in, in a slightly different way um, than, than everyone else because I don't know if you remember last year when the ground was, was similar and it rode on heavy. I, I thought the one place you didn't want to be was up the inside where Adio ended up being because he kicked and when they, they have the false running rail, I think they'll probably have a false running rail in, in place at Longshore on, on Sunday. We need to keep an eye on that. But if that is the case, the ones that are drawn on the inside tend to dart towards the inside. And um, I think that's what did for Adi in the end. And it certainly ended up being in favour of uh, Tukai Tatasa, who came down the middle um, where the best ground was, the unpoached ground was. So given it's going to be similar to, to what we had last year, I, I, I don't see it being that much of a, of a problem because he'll end up being wide on or towards the outside of the group, wherever they decide, to, where Frankie decides to um put him um, and it'll mean that he'll be charging down the middle like it was last year and, and we know he likes the ground we know he stays really well I think you're probably going to get a, a fairly strong solid reliable run from Takata Tato who's obviously been trained for the race he's almost been trained in French style hasn't he he's, he's had mm. um, just a four runs this season needed his first run ran brilliant at Royal Ascot beyond pile drive I mean arguably that's one of the best pieces of form coming into the race and then it was a full run and messy affair last time out, but that was only a prep. Um, he's very much been trained for this race in mind. I think he'll be in the first four or five uh, the last year's winner. Whether his track position isn't quite as good as last year and something gets first run on him, I, I don't know. But I'd, I'd be pretty confident of backing him each way. I'd, I'd get um, you know my money back. I think Luxembourg, we, we've got the right favourite. You know, he beat the the right horses in inverted commas last time out, didn't he, in, in Ireland? You know, Vadani and, and um, Odiesta got strong form from um, from sort of like the three-year-old category and, and he beat them fair and square on the day. He looked for all the world as though he'd stay further. You know, he, he did them for stamina. He ground out a result rather than, you know, outpace them for, for want of a better uh, terminology. Uh, he's got a reasonable draw if you're looking at that, stall eight. Uh, he hasn't had a hard season either. Um, and he'll land the ground. I mean, he won on soft ground last year, didn't he, at the back end. So I, I wouldn't put you off him. I don't, I, it's one of those races I, d I don't, really like, don't really like it from a betting perspective. I, normally something absolutely like jumps out, out at me and I, I think, yeah, I definitely want to get with that. Um, I probably won't have a bet in the race, um, which seems almost inconceivable given it's the best race uh, of, of the weekend. But I think there's much be better betting opportunities than this one. So my strategy would probably be to go against the herd and back to to Tasso, just because I think he'll be the wrong price because everyone th can't, thinks he can't win from the draw. But I've got a sneaky feeling that coming down the middle from a wide position might not be a bad strategy. To to Tasso, 15 to 2 best price at the moment. That's a bet 365. And William Hill, as I say, Hill's going five places and is the 
probably as tentative a selection as I've ever heard you give that, Andy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've just got off. no view. I've got no. I've got very, very little view on the race. It, it's big field, heavy ground, back end of the season. Um, I'd, I'd normally want to get with a French horse that's been prepared for the race, but not there isn't any any from that category this this year. All right, Danny, this is this is where you earn your coin, mate. Give us uh, give us a couple of strong ones. <laughs> I, I, I agree with Andy. I think it's a horrendously competitive event. Um, Luxembourg, I was probably all over him until I mean, no, Brian said this week that if the ground gets too testing, he thinks that would be a, a big concern for him. If you're interested, if you look at uh, Aidan O'Brien's record, he's had 31 of O'Brien's 52 art runners stretching back to 1999 have been three year olds, and none have finished closer than the third achieved by High Chaparral in 2002. So that might put you off slightly. It's also the fact that he's stepping up to one mile four furlongs for the first time, the last horse to do that and win an arc was back in 1990. So I like him, but I just think if it went really testing, that would put me off him. Alpinista, she's solid, she's game, she's determined for some art press, but it looks sure to go well. But I think I'd, t- I'd agree with Andy, Torquato Tasso, just based on the ground, is probably the one to be with. Uh, at a bigger price, probably the French horse, Onesto, is definitely one to know. Second last time out for, um, in the Irish champion, but I think could be seen to better effects over this trip. And crucially, I think we'll handle the ground. So I think if you ask me for two against the field, I'd probably go Onesto uh, and Torquato Tasso. And quick mention for the Japanese horse here, title holder George, because they still haven't won the race. They're desperate to win an arc. I think he would have a bang chance if it didn't go too testing. But I think that's going to be his undoing. And sadly, that's what happens at Long Swamp in October, George. You sometimes get testing ground. And that's what happens. Your, your chance can be ruined. But I think Torquato Tasso is the most solid one. But a nod for Onesto at a bigger price. Onesto, last seen at Leopardstown uh, back in, in a couple of weeks ago, finishing just half a length behind Luxembourg as well. So, you know, if you think that the Luxembourg is the right favourite, it's hard not to come to the opinion that Onesto must be overpriced um, at the price we're seeing currently, which is uh, 12 to 1. So kind of the biggest price of, of uh, as I say, that top group in the market. Um Quick question, Andy, you know, if, if it's not a, a, a betting race, uh, we've got some good themes running through it, none more so than Westover, who gets the, uh, Rob Hornby gets the ride back uh, after, you know, being dropped off uh, with um, it's Colin Keane taking the ride for the last couple, uh, raced very freely last time out. Uh, good to see um, him get his chance, would be some story if, uh, if he can get up on Westover this time. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we should be writing him off either. Um Again, we don't know whether that ground is ideal for him. He has run on soft ground towards the back end of last season, the two are, but it's a very small sample size. Um, I, I just think everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong for him at Ascot. He, he was far too keen. Front runners have a horrendous record when they are too keen and they're in front at that at that, that track. So he was a he was a dead duck like from well after the first three or four furlongs. Um, you, you couldn't see him hanging on at Ascot, and he ended up obviously dropping out the back of the telly, which is pretty understandable given what happened to him early in the race. But Ray Beckett's horses in the last month have just been totally on fire. So he get, he'll he go there fresh. And we know a strongly run mile and a half suits him. I and mean, there's an argument to say he should have won the derby with a clearer run. Mm. Um, so he's he's got similar chances to the, to the big three-year-olds that are way ahead of him in the market. You know, the likes of Vidani and, and Luxembourg. Um, taking that view. I do think, I, I forgot to mention one at a big price, but now you've kind of re really back introduced me again. It's kind of given me a, 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 an extra nudge to mention one at a massive price. It's 80 to Quite one. You're a great with, host, Andy. Well done, mate, yeah. You know, you, <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know I was holding one back. I knew you weren't done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a French horse that I, I do think is overpriced because I think she runs this track particularly well and when the ground's deep, She's pretty good, and she's got a very good strike rate. She's won eight in twenty-seven. That's Grand Glory. She's eighty to one with William Hill. Um, but if you go back and w- watch her run last season when she was just touched off in in the Prix de l'Opera, her, her sectionals or back end splits were the same as the winner of of last year's Arc from from round about four or five out. Um, and she's got a very good record this season at Longsham again, winning two races on soft ground. Don't forget she finished third of five in the. Um, in the Princess of Wales on, on good to firm ground beyond state of rest mm. on ground, which would be absolutely alien to her. And then she got too far back in a tactically run race last time out. But again, that was just the prep 21 days ago. Um, she's 80, look, I 80 to one five places. It wouldn't surprise me if she was to run way better than those odds uh, suggest. There you go. Grand Glory, uh, one at a big price. I knew Andy wasn't done. Um, at, uh, at 80 to one, as he says, with William Hill, five places. Uh, and before we move on, just another 
I mean, we have to talk about Alpinista quickly. Uh, again, would be some story for, for Samart Prescott to get a an arc winner at this twilight stage of, of his career. Uh, I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying, hopefully. Um, Danny, thoughts on, on Alpinista's chances? Is the, is the, is the yeah, I think it... Is the ground too oh. soft for her? I, I would say so. I think that's she's won on soft at Haydock before, but I think she's another, you know, being out of Frankel and Bama Weeder, I think she doesn't want it too testing either. So the way Andy's talking about the rain they're gonna get, I mean, it could become a real mud bath and I don't think it would it would suit her. But what do you think, Andy? No, I I have always had her down as a good ground filling there. Um yeah, she did win at Haydock. I watched that video back this morning and you know, it, it was a good workmanlike performance, but she wasn't at her brilliant best. I mean, her form is outstanding on fast ground, but you know, connections will be really, really um, hoping that, that the forecast isn't right for her. I'd, I'd, I'd suggest on heavy ground, she'd be she'd be struggling. But you know, to answer your question, George, uh, you know, Mark Prescott, one of the you know the doyens of the of the training ranks, and I've seen there's been a few articles not just in the racing publications as well this week. So he's quite an important person, you know, in terms of transcending the sport and getting the sport some national exposure, some good interviews. But I do think, you know, despite how good a story it will be, I just think that the the weather has gone against her. Interesting stuff. Yeah, the weather uh, for Alpine East back is, um, will be interesting to see how the market does shift over the next couple of days. But to Quater Tasso, seemingly the, the tentative selection for both of the guys uh, and the bigger prices, Ernesto at 12 to 1 for Danny, and then the big price one. Uh, it'd be typical, Andy, if you come on, so you don't really have a fancy then banging an 80 to 1 winner in the arc. Grand Glory 80 to 1 uh, with William Hill uh, worth putting in um, a small each way bet there. On then to the second race we're covering on the card is the 350, uh, the Pre de l'Opera. Uh, only 365 currently out with prices um, at the moment, uh, as far as I can see. Uh, but Nashua is the uh, 9 to 4 favourite ahead of uh, Above the Curb at 3 to 1. Uh, La, La Parisienne 4 to 1. Tuesday eight to one, Maestra ten to one, uh, Travonance is uh, sixteen to one, Abira and uh, Insinuendo uh, both twenty to one, uh, twenty five to one bar those. Danny, any strong fancies in the in the second race we're covering at Longchamp? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Above the Curve. Uh, I think she's going to be very very tough to beat here. Well, I hope. I think Nashua, you've got to respect the win in the Nassau. Seems to be doing all her best work at the end of her races. Trip's not going to be a problem, but she's another one. I don't think she's desperate for it to get too testing, being by Frankel and even the damn Princess Lulu. I don't think the best form did come on testing ground. Had a win on heavy, actually, to be fair. So maybe that that could help. But I just think, uh, given the Frankel breeding, I would be taking on Nashua. Above the curve, already proven at the track, was really, really impressive winner of the Priest and Allery uh, back in May. And it was a good win after a, after a break in the Blantford. Really kept on well, was all out of the, at the death. But I do think plenty more to come from her, given she's already proven over the trip with the ground in her favour. Ryan Moore takes the right. He doesn't ride Tuesday. I think there's a lot in her favour. Yeah, three to one. Uh, as I say, best price at the moment with 365. I've got a feeling um, we might see a bit bigger elsewhere when everyone else comes out. Uh, but we'll, I mean, not because I disagree with you, but just because I, I do think um, with Nashua, some, some are going to open shorter than that nine to four. Um, you'd have thought so above the curve, three to one as it stands. But, but have a look on the odds checker grids and you might get a bit bigger. Um, a pretty strong selection there for Danny. Uh, Andy, how do you see it? Yes, George, I, I agree with Danny here with above the curve. Uh, I'm also a very a big fan of uh, Joseph O'Brien's filly. Um, really impressed with her last time out at the Curra. She was entitled to need the run. She'd been off the track for a little while. Um, and when Insinuendo came alongside her, you thought, oh, she's going to play second fiddle here. But love the way she got her head down, battled, ground out a result. And that should put her absolutely spot on uh, for this assignment uh, three weeks later. She's got a reasonably good draw. And uh, that's what we think anyway, you know, sort of somewhere in the middle. Um, she handles a ground. She's a big, strong mare as well. I think you're going to need something that's going to really power through that ground. Uh, come Sunday, which is um, part of her game. You know, she's got a very strong physique, uh, much stronger than Nash was. Um, so, yeah, I'd be with her. Another one to bear in mind as well under the conditions is my Astra. She got particularly modest ride by Danny Tudhoe, but the Curra when finishing second in the Pretty Polly last time out. I think if she would have been ridden um, a little bit more positively, she probably would have won that day. But she's got very good form on soft ground. She was good the time before at air. So the conditions for her on Sunday will be ideal. Um, and obviously with the Willie Haggis team still flying and, and uh, his mares and Philly's doing particularly well um, pretty much all through the season. I'd expect a big run out of her. So I agree with Danny with Above the Curve, uh, but if you didn't want to sort of like throw all your eggs in one basket and look for something at a bigger price, then my Astra. 
above the curve, as you say, out of, out of five. Um, and my Astra is currently uh, 10 to 1 at Bet365 uh, out of still 10. Uh, the two there for Andy, uh, both the guys agreeing on above the curve. Uh, on the to the Prix de l'Abbé, um, where the Platinum Queen is the 5-2 to two favourite ahead of uh, Bernal at 11-2. Uh, to two. Butchering the French language there. Uh, Coeur de Pierre, there you go, 15-2. to two. Mitt Barhi, 8-1. to one. Uh, Case of you, 8-1. to one. Teresa Mendoza, 10-1. to one. Flotus, 14s. Muniesta, 16-1. to 20-1 uh, to one bar those. Uh, Andy, back to you for the, for the Prix de l'Abbé. Well, unlike the um, the uh, Prix de l'Ot de Triomphe, where the draw is, um, I wouldn't say not so crucial, because you can win from a high draw uh, um, and in the in the arc, you definitely want a low draw in this. Anything sort of ten above, uh, and you might as well send your photograph. Like if if you're on if you're a fan of a case of you, and I'm one of them. I mean, he, I mean, he's an eight to one shot, but I'd stick in a zero on the end of that. If he wins from stall nineteen, I mean, that's almost impossible to overcome that. Um, Benoit, the uh, French uh, horse who won um, the Group Three, which is the, the main trial for this race, um, a few weeks back, twenty twenty one days ago, he was drawn in stall one that day, so he had the benefit of running on the rail, and of course he dominated, so everything had to. Um, running the swamp outside him, so he's now he's kind of got drawn stall 18. So you can basically just cross a line through those two, and they take out a huge chunk of the market. One's a six to one shot, one's an eight to one shot. The Platinum Queen's drawn stall seven, so that's not too bad. And if she can jump and get over to that far side rail, which I think will probably be the intention, given that the speed that she's got, she's going to be very difficult to beat here. Even the accounting for the ground is going to be on the soft side. I don't think it'll be as soft on the straight track as it would be on the on the um, on the round track because it's virgin ground. It'll be the only race that they run over on the five, five furlong over the two days. And as we saw last time out in the Flying Childers, she's just a very very good filly on soft ground. A run in the um, in, in the race at York as well suggested that she can handle the older horses. Um, and she's got some exceptionally good time figures as well. She's one of the fastest fillies that we've got this season. So I think she's the right favourite. She's definitely the one to beat. If you're looking for a, a, a home-based horse that will relish the conditions and stay on very strongly, that's Cour de Pierre, um, who's uh, drawn in stall eight. Um, he just did all his best work a little bit too late last time out, but um, he'll definitely be staying on stronger than most because he's, like I say, a big, strong sprinting type uh, that knows his way around long shot. So those would be my two against the field. You definitely want a low draw. Platinum Queen would be the number one choice, but that Cour de Pierre will be a good each way alternative. Don't back anything that's drawn out on the outside. The Platinum Green, 5-2. to two. Uh, Coeur de Pierre, 15-2. to two. Uh, Both with uh, Bet365. Uh, Danny, hopefully you hadn't had a shortlist here of, of horses just drawn uh, 10 and higher. I did like, I thought a bigger price, Castle Star uh, from 14, but I, as Andy says, the draw. But I just think she has promised so much, this, this horse, and hasn't really delivered. But I think there was a bit of promise in the last couple of runs of shit. It will win something at some point, but I don't think it's going to be an abai. I, I don't like the race, really. I think I'd probably, you know, with Andy on, could appear each way. I, I do think the Platinum Queen, she handled the soft well enough at Doncaster last time, was only just beaten by Trillium. If she can get out in receipt of all that weight, I do think she deserves to win one of these big ones, given how she ran in an unfort. So I think she's tough to beat. I, I don't see a lot of them. You know, the likes of Flotus, T-Spirit, Mitt Barhi, are they going to be as effective on, on that ground again? So I think given she's just about proven, I think she can uh, hopefully see off Coeur de Pierre. But I think Andy's got a stronger case for me on this one. I wasn't that keen on the race. I, th- I also think just as well, at most Salitas, she's the absolute complete and utter rank outside of the field, sort of 50 to 1. But if some firms you know, go four or five places over the weekend, it wouldn't surprise me if, if she bodged her way into the frame just because she's drawn three. She ran in this race last year from stall 10 and she finished fourth. Mm. Um, so, uh, you know, she looks an absolute million on form. I mean, you think, think she's a listed horse at best, but given very, very soft conditions, she's a t- totally different animal uh, to the one that has been running this season on good or good to firm ground. So, because I just bear her in mind at a big price, she's drawn three. And because of that draw, you can w- you basically look at this race as a 10 runner race because those from 10 to, to 19 have got absolutely zero chance of winning. So, you know, even if she gets in the first four or five at 50 to one, uh, and I just think she'll keep going better than most from that draw. So she, she's another one to look at a big price. Oh, Salita, 50 to one, as Andy says, uh, another big price one. Let's get that. The each way double in, Andy, the 80, 80 to one and the 50 to one. That'd be Andy. Yeah, it's not uh, beyond the realms of possibility, that. And as, as 
you could probably almost joke at that, but that that's no, I'm not. It's not. It's not. It's not because I'm not um, out of all possibility that. And you know I don't joke about each way doubles. Um, on then no. to the uh, on to the uh, Prix de la Forêt, the, the final race on the card on Sunday at Longchamp, and uh, Kid Ross is the six to four favourite ahead of Tenebrism at four to one, Fang thirteen to two, Sandrine eight to one, New Energy ten to one, uh, Malavat uh, twelve to one, uh, Mangostine at fourteen, uh, twenty to one bar those. Um, Danny, you didn't have a strong view on the last, so I'll, I'll come to you first here. This is a huge, huge chance for Kim Ross to get a first group one. Um, it's been impressive the last couple of starts. I've never, I think sometimes he might have let a few people down, but he's really got his act together, particularly at York, and he was impressive at Doncaster. That obviously came on soft ground. I think he was fourth to Space Blues in the race last year. Did run well there because he was held up and just didn't get the gaps at the right time, so you could probably mark that up. Um, and I think given just he's proven on the ground, I know it's a bit boring going for the favourite, but I don't think there's much in here that can give him much to think about. Sandrine, ten, Tenebrism would probably be one, given she gets the way, and she's already won. I think she won the Jean Pratt earlier on this year. Of the home challenge, I'm, I'm not that keen. Maybe Thang could be the one to give, give most to think about. But I thought Kim Ross, if he was going to win a Group 1, I didn't think he'd have a better opportunity. There's been some really good forays down the year. Not sure this is the best one, George. Yeah, agreed. Six to four. And it would be some uh, career art, wouldn't it, for Kim <coughs> Ross after breaking year one stopwatch on debut uh, a couple of years ago. Disappointing after that. And then finally winning a group one a couple of years later. Uh, are you team Ken Ross here, Andy? I am, yeah. I've, I've always been a big fan of Kim Ross, as you know, um, right from day one when, when he did post that big number in that maiden. Um, he's gradually worked himself uh, by hook or by crook as to one of the best seven furlong specialists uh, in Europe, if not the world. Um there's not many horses that can live with him when he's on song, as he proved last time out at Doncaster, beating their energy. Um, and he was a bit unlucky, I thought, in this race last year. I don't think he was as good a horse last year as he is now. I think he's improved, um, probably due to the fact he's had another year in training. And of course, he's from a yard who's hitting the ball out of the park with everything. Um, but he just seems a more professional, switched-on horse, very professional. You can put him anywhere in a race. And last year, he, he got a modest draw, and he was, he was last turning for home. And there was a big field, I think 15 runners last year. Danny's right to point out that he had absolutely zero chance of winning. He actually came down the outside and flashed down to finish a never near a fourth behind Space Blues. And that run alone would give him a, a golden opportunity to win this, let alone looking at what he's done so far this season. He should beat Tenebrism and Sandrine and No Energy again. The only fly in the ointment's that French um, horse, Fang, who I uh, did actually did a bit of work on um, at the last meeting there. I did all the sort of sectional times for, for Arc Trial Day. I thought that could be relevant. And he, by far and away, did the best split times of any horse on that card. 33-3 did, and I think the nearest to it was something like 34-5. So he's got a really good turn of foot, that Fang. And I notice he's two for two at Longchamp. Uh, and both wins have come on soft or heavy ground. So he's definitely one to consider from an each-way perspective, or bet without the favourite if he didn't want to take six to four about Kinross, who is very much the most likely winner. Uh, but, I mean, I think everyone will come to that conclusion, to be fair. Lovely stuff. Yeah, Ken Ross, uh, clearly the right favourite and, and the selection from both the guys as well. Um, we're going to look at Saturday's racing quickly now, uh, too. I just wanted to, um, before I hand it over to you guys, we've, of course, got the, the Prix de Cadran uh, 325 on, on Saturday. Kiprios, um, you know, one of the horses of the of the year. Uh, five to six favourite, head of Quickthorn at three to one. Tashkan, 11 to two. 20 to one bar those. Um, you know, the, the each way thieves will be out in full force here. Uh, Andy, but can you see any way that Kiprios gets beat? Um, and if it become a, a real slog, um, you know, this is two mile four on, on what's going to be very deep ground. And we saw what Quickthorn did last time at the Naysmore. And he, he's a horse who's improving at a rapid rate of knots. Um, you know, conditions for him are going to be absolutely no problem whatsoever. Um, I, I'd probably be sticking him in some each way multiples, Quickthorn. Um, he just wouldn't be for me, Kiprios at four to five. He's not the kind of horse I want to be backing in that, that, those kind of odds. Um, Looking at the rest of the, are we, are we looking at the rest of the card now, or should I let Danny have you say on, yeah. on that? Well, Danny, do you, to, do you have anything to add on the Cadran, or should we move on? I think if he's going to get beat this season, this is the one. Because um, I, I do think two mile four is right at the end of his stamina, and is he really that good on very soft ground? Whereas Quick Fawn, he went off like a light last time out, but he he stayed on really strongly. So he's a he's a really interesting runner against him. So it would be a no bet for me. But I think Kip Ross is the first time this year. I think I see him slightly vulnerable. Good stuff there. Um, okay, Andy, over to you for the rest of the card on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, it's a real shame um, that the conditions have, have uh, deteriorated 
significantly <laughs> in, in, the, in the last week for, for connections of Anmart. Whether, whether he still gets away with it, I don't know, and, and wins the pre-dollar. But he's probably one of the most exciting and brilliant horses I've seen so far this season. His time figures have been absolutely sensational. His victory in the John Smiths was really good. And then last time out, he, he toyed with Grocer Jack, who uh, had, had clocked a big number when he won at Newbury, and he, he made him look very pedestrian, beat him four lengths. But that was on good ground, and, and his previous win was good to firm. Jim Crowley actually said he was he was a better horse at Haydock with a little bit of juice in the ground. But there's juice in the ground, and there's bottomless French ground, which he's likely to run on Saturday. So whether 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 I want to back him at nine to four under those conditions, probably not, which is a real shame because I think I think he's a brilliant horse. The 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 the, the main short price favourite that I think will win um, at uh, Longsham on Saturday is a. He's a horse called uh, Erevan or Irvan in, in the uh, pre Daniel Wildenstein. A horse that uh, finished third last time out um, behind in Spiral at Doville in that Group One. Probably had a little bit too much to do in the hands of Sumi on that day. Just gave it a bit too much to do, but was a good winner at Chantilly the time before. Um, will will like the conditions when he won at Doville on debut. It was absolutely spectacular that day and. Um, the form has worked out really well. The fourth horse, I think, runs in the Arc de Triomphe uh, over the weekend. So the, the conditions are absolutely fine for that. Definitely got the best form coming in there. And I just think he's a perhaps a better horse than the Rev- Revenant, who has obviously been a, a globetrotter for um, um, connections in the last few season or two. We've seen quite a bit of that horse uh, over here, haven't we? Um, and, and on soft or heavy ground. But I think Irvine just might to have too much um, um, for that horse uh, on this occasion. About 15 to 8 best price. That's for Sport Nation. Uh, 7 or 4 market price uh, pretty much across the board. Uh, Danny, anything to add uh, a long shot on Saturday or do you want to go over to, to this side of the of the channel? Aravan's a huge... And I think that's the one of the best races of the of the week, actually. You've got the revenue, of course, in there. And I'm a really big fan of triple time for Kevin Ryan. I think whatever he's done, he, he had a bit of a setback and he was only seen at Haydock recently, 28 days ago. He's going to be really, really good next year. But I think Aravan will be very tough to beat in that. And two of us on the card... I think Denmark could be tough to beat in the 250. Interesting that Aidan O'Brien decided to run him in that he won well on soft ground on his first start. And in the first race, I don't understand Duke de Sess is a really short price for Dermot World. But this is a big step up in distance. He's going another three furlongs, having won over a mile four last time out. I think go with the, the French, the the, the uh, La Mahana here. was impressive last time out for Jean-Claude Rouget. And I think Gisette the prices should be favourite and isn't. She's got a good turn of foot. She has that low Mahana. I saw her win last time out, as Danny said. Really impressed with her. Um, yeah, the five to two looks the wrong price for her. The five to two, pretty much across the board there. Coral Hills, Unibet, Live Score Bet, and Labrooks all go five to two about La Mahana in the first at 12.23 tomorrow. Hopefully getting the weekend off to an absolute flyer uh, for, for Rod Shecker, betting show viewers and listeners. Um, let's look at Newmarket and Ascot then quickly. Andy, I'll come to you first. We've got the Sun Chariot. At Newmarket and plenty else as well. And over at Ascot, um, lots to get stuck into there too. Um, what are you, you're not going to give away all the, the crown jewels, um, but anything for the listeners who've made no. it this far into the show? I'll, I'll just mention the high-profile races. So um, I'm obviously going to save a little bit uh, for myself with the, with the one or two nuggets here, there and everywhere. Um, I think that's fair enough. Um, I think Sun Char- the Sun Chariot should go the way of Saffron Beach under the prevailing conditions. I'm not sure the ground is going to be ideal for homeless songs. Um, I was a bit disappointed with Hamlet's songs last time out. I must admit, she was brilliant, uh, obviously, early on in the season, the Guineas, but a, a, a turn of foot was blunted rather somewhat at um, Leopardstown last time out. And if they get the rain, which is predicted in the in the next 24 hours, obviously, it's good ground at the moment, but it's likely to be good to soft or even soft, maybe, um, if they have the rain in the quantities is expected. I think that will really suit uh, Saffron Beach, who loves the Rowley Mile. He's proven over the Rowley Mile. Uh, so, um, no prizes for originality there, but she's the right favourite. Um, Ascot, um, just mentioned one there who will love the conditions and has got a really good CV over the straight seven furlongs. I'm just scrolling down to it now to make sure it's still running. Symbolise of Andrew Baldins um, in the, the big handicap. Um, I think he finished his second twice towards the back in the last season to Aldari, who... I think he's Group One bound uh, on Champions uh, the Champions Weekend at Ascot in another week or two. Um, to finish second to him twice on on back end of the, the back end of the season soft ground, he's obviously strong form, uh, and he ran really well last time on at Doncaster. And just one more to mention, 
in the two-year-old trophy. I think Cold Case has got by far and away the best form, uh, having finished third in the Jim Crack and then won a good sale, valuable sales race last time at Doncaster. And the horse that finished fourth to him, Galleron, uh, went and scooped the 617,000 Goffs Millions uh, race last week for connection. So the form of that Doncaster race has taken an immediate boost. And I saw him at five to one, which looks a fair enough each way price, um, given his form, uh, his time figures and his ability to handle a little bit of ease in the ground. Well, he's sending me around the odds checker site there. Cold case, four to one best price uh, at the moment um, with Skybet. That is in the 321 at Red Car. I wasn't expecting to be headed to Red Car today, but here we are. Sorry, buddy. S- symbolize. No, it's all good. This is uh, that's where I earn my coin. Uh, symbolize in the uh, in the handicap uh, is, I think, 15 to two. I saw at Asker. Um, I will confirm that in just a second. I think with Hills as well. Um, yeah, 15 to two best price uh, with Hills symbolize. Um, they have five places. Uh, Danny, any other business for you? Saffron Beach, very tough to beat in the Sun Chariot. I'm in agreement there with Andy. I think Homeless Songs really blotted the copybook last time out. And conditions will be in the favour. Uh, cold case is the one, like Andy says, in the two-year-old trophy that I'm also sweet on. Uh, in a news story, I guess King Charles III should have his first winner in the Royal Silks, Mellow Yellow, in the 427 at Newmarket. Uh, I think impressive at Wolverhampton last time out. The opening mark looks high enough but I think it doesn't look the strongest of races so should come out on top and George I'm really sorry to throw you around here but here we go. my no, biggest fancy confirm, of the m- weekend m- Mellow Yellow is 13 to 8 just with, with Paddy's and Betfair Sports but right now I don't know if there's prices for this yet but I, the jumps is coming George it's raining in Mallorca it it's raining in Longchamp wherever <laughs> uh, 2 o'clock Fontwell Harry Redknapp I'm sure his eyes will be elsewhere this weekend he's got a fascinating runner called Icar Grand Champ makes his debut for Gary Moore been working very well at home but the thing about this horse is it's breeding is ridiculous out of a fr- out of the french it's out of a stack of french grade one winners in the breeding uh, a son of cat guard and i think the moors might have found a very nice opportunity and he could be one to watch he could prove a lot better than that race in time so i hate to be a disgrace and go over to the jumps but I, I think that's one to note going forward with the jumps on the horizon have you just given us the ballymore winner is that what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that. It will lose to it. will lose now tomorrow, but at least I've got a bit rogue. <laughs> a car um, grand champ. There you go. First run. Uh, a French recruit on on a yeah. I mean, a, a fitting day for for a French recruit to run first time up, even if it's at the two o'clock at Fortwell for for Gary Moore and Harry Redknapp. Um, yeah, Harry. What, two o'clock on on Saturday. So yeah, it'll be just uh, half through the second half of the North London Derby. I think I. I know what Harry will be watching. I don't think it's the football. I'm sure Harry will be watching Fontwell uh, on his phone, uh, maybe rather than on the big screen. Um, cheers then to, to both Danny and to to, An- uh, to Andy. I should say as well, no prices as well for the uh, for the the Harry Redknapp good thing. Um, yeah, no prices from Danny. Uh, so no prices from Danny. Danny's not there. He's not running this weekend. Uh, thank you to <laughs> and to Andy. It's such a tiz now. Um, for, for sharing their insight and thoughts as ever um so much to get through this weekend what a weekend of racing both uh, in, in the uk in ireland and also uh, over in, in france as well uh, for those going to long shop have a brilliant weekend it's an unbelievable experience hopefully the race will justify it as well uh, do download the odds checker app where you can find the best prices booking offers free bets place terms and of course andy's tips he's kept a couple up his sleeve i know that for the weekend uh, straight to the app every single morning racing Uh, Do enjoy the racing. Uh, Have a great weekend. Uh, And as is always the case, please do ensure that you're gambling responsibly.